The biggest game changer for us this year was forming a advisory board. We wish we had done it sooner. You don't need to take investment or be earning millions to form your own board. You could do it right now. So let me tell you how. Hi everyone, Lucy from Candid Founders here. At the start of this year, we formed an advisory board for our small business, Bearkind, which is an e-commerce sock company. It has been one of the single best things we have done for the business so far. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can easily start your own board, how you can follow our template to run super valuable board meetings, and finally, my top tips for making an advisory board for your small business. The first thing I'd like to say is that you do not need to be earning millions and have loads of investors to start start an advisory board for your business. If anything, an advisory board is great because they're not taking e equity in your business unless that's something that you set up and they don't have any formal control. They are there simply to advise you. When you take investment, part of the process might be that you have to put some of those investors on your board. You might have to run formal board meetings, be that monthly or quarterly. And at a very minimum, they usually ask for you to have like outputs that come out either monthly or quarterly that are sharing the progress of your business with your shareholders. We don't have investors on our board. It's purely advisory, so it's much more relaxed, but it is so helpful for business growth. So how can you start your own board? First thing I'd say is start by building a board pack and have a board meeting by yourself um, or with a co-founder or someone that's really close to the business and just start with that. This will really help you with your kind of confidence before you're going out to someone else. And also the process of pulling together the board pack in itself is such a helpful process. Pull together the strategy of your business your plan, so your goals and how you're performing against that plan. So are you going to meet your goals this year? If not, why not? And if you think you are, what's happening in the business that's going to get you to those goals and have them achieved by the end of the year? Because this should all be documented in the board pack. So when you go to someone and kind of show them what's going on in the business, they have an understanding of where you're trying to get to and how you're going to get there. If you need any help with this, check out some of our previous videos that we've done. Andy has actually put our board pack on YouTube. So he's done a few videos where he's run you through the monthly board pack that we've done with our advisory board, but it just means that you get an idea of what we put in our board pack. Feel free to copy that and make it work for your business. Um, I'll provide the links in the comments below. The next easy step for you is to look at your own network. So have you got anyone in your personal network, whether business, friends, family, maybe someone that you work with that could help you, that someone that you could trust and might just have some good opinions for you? The answer is probably yes, there's going to be at least one person that could run through your deck with you and just provide some fresh perspective. Then just ask them for a small favor, one hour to run them through what's going on in your business at the moment. Show them what you're up to, show them the board deck, no formal commitments, just an hour of their time. And we find that a lot of people are really happy to like, you know, take a look at your business and offer their opinion and their advice and their guidance. And it's not a formal commitment. You're not having to go to someone saying, hey, please join my board, we meet monthly. And you know, we don't know when that might end. I think it's much actually easier to go to someone and say, just an hour of your time. And we found that actually people really enjoy that process. And if they do, they might stick around for a bit. So you might get them on a quarterly basis or you might get them like another few times and then you've kind of taken the value you need from them. I think with this process, they don't have to be a formal member of your board all the time forever. Just think of it as a really good way to get someone else's opinion. And it may be that you have one hour with this person and you don't speak to them about it again, but you take a few nuggets of value and that's all you need. So I would actually say don't aim for a consistent level of people on your board every month. I think it's not super achievable unless you've got people that you can really trust and rely on and that are willing to give up their time. Our board is voluntary, um, so they're not getting equity. Uh, we give them free socks, of course, but they are there because they care about us and what we're doing with the business and they enjoy it. And now and then we have someone come in that we'll just have a one-to-one -one with them and we'll share the board deck with them and we'll take their advice, but we don't have like a really like set board like you would see in like a traditional like corporate setting it's a very relaxed process but what is really helpful is the consistency comes from us doing this process every month regardless it might be that we don't have a board meeting each month we might miss it you know people have conflicting priorities things going on but we will be there consistently every month we've got the board updated Andy and I will run each other through it um, if it, even if it's just the two of us then he might run someone else through it or have a one-to-one -one with someone so the consistency lies in us 
continually going through that process, building up the board, putting all the data in, because that helps us take that step back and look at what the strategy is for the business. And that is the most valuable part of the process. Bonus points for every single person that we bring in that can give us advice on it as well. So how can you run a valuable board meeting? I've got a few pieces of advice for you. So the first one is make sure you do have an updated pack. So be very clear on what your business goals are um, and how you're tracking against them. So the most valuable thing someone can ask is what is your goal and how are you going to achieve it? And then you should be able to lie, lie out in the pack that you've got the data proving, well, revenue wise, I think we are going to hit it, but we might not because we're missing this over here. And then the conversation is, okay, well, if you're missing that, what are you going to do about it? What gap are you filling? Um, so I think it's really important to have a clear vision of what you're trying to achieve this year, how you're going against it. And then that's when the board members come in because they'll have ideas on how to achieve your goals. And if something's missing, um, um, you know, maybe there's something you haven't thought of that they can bring into it. Um, they might have advice for who you should speak to next. But the most valuable thing is having that clear goal and how you're tracking because then someone can easily provide advice against that. Some other really good measures to have is um, month on month progress and year on year progress. And actually we found that's really helpful for us because we're coming into this and our board members are looking at it saying, well, hey guys, you might not feel like you're doing super well at the moment, but year on year, you're smashing it. You're doing so much better. So every month we have tracked in the board this year, our revenue has been higher than the previous year. So it's a really good comparison for us. And then month on month, we can also track that as well. So if we had a really good July and then a poor August, we'd call that out and say, why has that happened? And then we'd discuss it and work out, okay, is there anything we can actually do? Was there anything happening in the kind of wider world that caused that? Um, so month on month and year on year, really good to track, as well as your KPIs, your key performance indicators. So these are the things that are kind of driving towards your goal. So if you have a revenue goal, you'd have KPIs underlining that, that are like, this is how we're going to achieve this goal. So say another example is if you've got a certain profit um, margin or a, a figure of profit, uh, absolute profit that you want to hit, you might have KPIs that fall behind that. So possibly you have like a certain percentage um, of costs that go into it. So you might say, well, we want our shipping to only cost us 10%. Um, of our total revenue and then you could track that and if it's going above that you look at it and think well why has that gone above that well it's because there were strikes and we had to pay for a more expensive courier or okay so let's swap couriers or let's charge customers for shipping over a certain threshold and things like that so you need to kind of work out what you're tracking and what you're trying to aim for and it will really help the process also be ready to take all feedback on board in these board meetings it doesn't mean you have to implement it all it's an advisory board they're there to advise it doesn't mean you have to do it but the whole point of this process is to get diverse opinions in so just be really open to people's critique because at the end of the day they are volunteering their time to help you also do take some minutes not like super detailed as i said this is kind of like quite a relaxed process but at the bare minimum date who attended and then just key notes and actions um, it will really help you consolidate your thoughts i find that it helps me concentrate on what's going on um, and obviously it kind of helps you do the download from the meeting so once you finish and you're off that kind of buzz of having a really good meeting you've got like a solid list of actions that you can then work through and implement if you choose to. A really important piece of advice is do not give up after the first session. Your pack might not be the best to start with. Ours definitely wasn't. It's taken months for us to get to this point and we're still not completely happy with it. It's a work in progress. That's the whole point. So don't aim for perfection on the first one. Some board meetings will be better than others, but don't give up because each one, you'll at least take one valuable thing from it. So it's really important to be consistent and persistent. So to finish off my top tip for making an advisory board for your small business. Be open to critique. This is the whole point of the process. Create your own consistency and others will follow. Hold yourself accountable each month to spend some time on this deck. Spend some time on your business strategy and the data that is pushing you forward. And then document that in the board pack. Take a moment to watch one of our board pack sessions. I'll link them below. Andy does a really good job of taking you through what we go through in our board pack, what we've learned, what we're implementing, what we're not, and what's going on in the next month. Um, and it'll give you a really good idea of what our board pack looks like and just copy that and shape it for your own business. You can start now uh, by starting to make your board pack and then just start with one person, someone that you trust, reach out to them and say, hey, can I take you through what's going on in the business at the moment and what we'd like to do next? People love to share their opinions and don't feel like you have to have a massive board pack like fleshed out with everything. Maybe you just kind of have the kind of high level stuff of what your strategic outlook is, what you're trying to achieve this year, and then you can build it out from there. And I think any questions they have will help you 
build the board pack out for the future. People are very generous with their advice because we've been very open and honest with where we've needed help. So we've had e-commerce experts, McKinsey consultants, chief marketing officers and more. They've all reviewed our deck and provided us with feedback. So it has been such a valuable experience. If you've got any questions about this process, the board tech or the monthly board meetings, forming an advisory board, please drop them in the comments below. We'd be happy to help. I hope you found this video useful. Show your support by dropping us a like and subscribe for more content that will help you and your business grow. I'll see you in the next video.